Hi everyone, welcome back to A Better Biomed. Today, I'm going to go over the top 10 tools I use when I'm out in the field. Now this is my tool bag, and one of the things that we always have to consider when we're out doing work orders is the weight of our tool bag. You can see, it probably gets pretty heavy pretty quick because it's got a lot of space. But the space doesn't all have to be filled. Could you imagine a 60 pound tool bag? It would be an absolute bear to effectively lug around between departments, especially in a facility as large as this one. So we have to make sure that our tools are effective, that they have multi-purpose, and that they're a really good quality to hold up because this is a commercial setting and we're pretty rough on tools. Anything to get the job done as quickly and as professionally as possible. Hopefully you find something educational that I'm about to show you. Maybe one of these tools will make your job a little bit easier as well. Number 10, the zip tie gun. Now, most people don't realize it, but the zip tie gun is one of the most effective tools in your arsenal. You're going to use a lot of zip ties if you're a good technician. Now the zip tie gun, what it does is it tensions the zip tie and it clips it off when it achieves that tension. I'll show you here with a set of cables. We use them for bundling hoses, wires, attaching power supplies. I think the uses of a zip tie are almost endless. So you put the zip tie around your cable, the gun fits over the zip tie, and then as you squeeze, it tensions it till it reaches the tension, and then it clips it off flush. Gone are the days of the sharp tail that sticks out of the zip ties. So if you ever reach into a video cabinet, you'll get cut. As you can see, I've got lots of scars on my hands. That's why this is such a sensitive subject. The zip tie guns will give you a professional finish on your final product. My zip tie gun here is a Panduit GTS. To tension it, you have this ring that you'll spin to tension according to the scale. Or you can do a quick tension, which is this cap on the back. So if I want to really ratchet down on this, I'll turn it up. It's not very heavy. It fits very well in a toolkit. The zip tie gun. Number nine, a power screwdriver or a power driver. Now you can see I have two power drivers here. One of them I use extensively in my workshop and the other one fits in my tool bag. Now the way that this one works is there's a lockout so when you put it in your tool bag it doesn't activate. Push it to unlock, there's an action button. You depress the button and you rotate the driver one direction or the other. Now this power driver here, it doesn't put out a lot of torque, just enough to drive the fasteners. So if your fastener starts to cross thread, you can easily change the direction and correct the thread pattern. Anybody that's ever put a lot of screws into sheet metal knows that they have a tendency to cross thread. So all you got to do is back it and then go forward and it will find its thread and it will thread correctly. This one here is a DeWalt brushless impact driver, lithium ion batteries, compact design, but it's also heavy. So this is not the one that I take into the field, the Craftsman 4 volt, excellent little driver. Both of them have LED flashlights on the front. There's nothing more irritating than finding a fastener that's in a deep location like a cabinet. It's a nice little touch. Good driver. I got this one here from Lowe's for $39 and this one here comes as a kit with a brushless drill for I believe $200. Both of them are excellent. This one's in my tool bag, this one's in my workshop. Number eight is a good set of wire strippers. You can see that I've got two wire strippers here on my desk. One of them is a heavy duty Klein set of wire strippers which also has a nice beefy jaw at the front so I can also use it as a needle nose and this one here is a Gardner Bender GESP 70 this one's not as heavy duty as that one but it's a lot lighter and in the field it's got one extra really neat feature that I wish this one had you can see on the tail 
it's got a crimp so I can do wire crimps quickly and easily. Other important features to take note is you have these holes right here around the midsection. That's so you can actually cut off fasteners if they're too long. Find the hole that best matches your length and you snap it off. So now I have a custom length fastener. The Klein set here used to be in my tool bag. They're an excellent set of pliers, but when it comes to weight, we're trying to trim down as much weight as possible. And that's where the Gardner benders come in. One other important feature to look for on your set of wire strippers is a large gauge cutter. You can see both of these have it. This one's got a slightly curved blade, which means it's not trying to eject the cord when you try to cut it. It kind of holds it and cuts it. Whereas the Kleins, it's a straight cutter, which comes down at a V. It's effective, but you have to hold the wire while you're cutting it. I really like the design of the Gardner Benders. Excellent set of pliers. My tool bag, my workshop. Number seven, what tool kit wouldn't be complete without a set of vice grips? These things have saved my bacon so many times it's not even funny. As you can see here, I've got the needle nose vice grips. That's because sometimes you'll have to get into an area that's not immediately near the surface and every little bit helps. Like I said in the beginning, multi-purpose is key to tool bag tools. These little pliers are usually used to grip on a fastener that might have broken off. So you can grip onto it and then spin it the rest of the way out. Like I said, these ones have saved me so many times. Actual vice grip brand needle nose vice grips. Some of the cheaper Chinese versions just don't cut it. I've had them fail on me in the field. Go for the name brand ones. They're not that expensive. They're only maybe 20 bucks. Number six, a stubby driver set. You can see here I've got a Craftsman stubby driver set. It consists of a ratchet, which is really low profile, your bit sets, and it even has sockets with a quarter inch socket adapter. This tool here, when you have it, is a blessing. There's so many times where you're going to have really low clearance to get on a fastener and you can't get a full size driver in. So instead of taking entire panels off or cross beams, all you got to do is get a low profile Phillips bit into that area and you can get your part off. Remember, speed and professionalism is what we're about. So we're on a timeline for each one of these repairs. This is a Craftsman 35 piece set. And one of the particular things that I like about it is on this ratchet, there's a very proud flip switch that reverses your direction. It's very positive and the resolution on the ratchet is really good, really good. This is going to be one of my favorite tools when I'm in one of those situations where I don't have very much clearance and I've got a fastener of some sort that is being stubborn. This can be found at any Lowe's store. It's a Craftsman 35 piece low profile ratchet set. Number five, flush cutters, micro cutters, or even angle cutters. They're called many things, but they serve largely the same purpose. You can see here I've got micro cutters or flush cutters and here I have angle cutters. Flush cutters or angle cutters are going to be used for cutting zip ties without damaging your cables. We use them for stripping back hoses off of barbs that are difficult to get off. Or we even use them for removing shrink tube. There's so many uses for these pliers, everybody's tool bag should have a set. I've got one that I keep in my workshop and one that's in my tool bag. Multi-bit screwdriver set. Here you can see I have a Lennox multi-bit screwdriver, but it serves one extra really cool purpose. You pull down on the lock ring and the neck extends way out. So sometimes you have a fastener that's in the middle of a device that you're trying to get out. 
this is the driver that you're going to use. Now the important thing to notice when you get into multi-bit drivers is the diameter of the collar right here near the bit. Often, especially on the cheaper drivers, you're going to find that this collar is going to be a larger diameter and that's going to prevent you from getting into some of the holes and getting your fastener out. So you can see here I've also got my multi-bit set. I use the long shank driver bits so that I can get into those fasteners that are in those tiny holes. They're all kept organized in this DeWalt bit kit. You can also see that I've got some, uh, some pin removers, a ratcheting bit driver, a couple other small things, some Loctite. But it all folds up into one neat compact package that fits nicely in a tool bag. So remember, the key is weight and versatility. This is as versatile as it gets. And yeah, it's kind of long, but you want that for some purposes. I believe that this driver was about 20 bucks at Lowe's. The bits I get from various sources and the DeWalt bit kits, I use them for multiple purposes, sometimes even to store fasteners when I remove them from a device. The option to this type of multi-bit set would be something like the Weha. 28188 screwdriver set. And the cool thing about the Weha set is there's actually a ring right here at the base of the driver. And the bit itself goes in and out of the driver handle by depressing the ring. And that will set your, your length. So you don't have this larger diameter that you're coping with in and around your equipment. The Weha set is pretty nice. It's a little more expensive, but it's also a lot less weight than even this kit. Number three, a fluke multimeter. Now this one should be in everybody's toolkit, and the reasons are just too numerous to even start to go over. You need a reliable, dependable, and durable multimeter in this career field. You're gonna be calibrating and diagnosing some of the most complex equipment available. Get a good meter. Now this is a Fluke 289. This is way more of a multimeter than what most technicians will ever use. But this one's got some cool features and that's why I use it. One of the reasons to get a good Fluke multimeter is not only because of its isolation rating, which you can see this one here is rated at Cat 4, 600 volts. We work around a whole variety from low voltage to extremely high voltage. You need a meter that's got true isolation. Also the probes, these are Fluke brand probes. We got Cat 3 and Cat 4 rating on the probes. One of the features you're going to use most on any multimeter is going to be continuity. This will tell you if there is a connection, a physical connection between point A and point B. Sometimes you're going to use it to test a wire to see if there's a breakage and sometimes you can use it to test to see if this board is really talking to this board over here. Continuity has to be a very fast reaction and positive sound so that you can be alerted as soon as the event is happening. And on fluke meters, it's actually like a digital event. The continuity reaction time is so quick, it's going to alert absolutely every single time. And on a cheap meter, what they do is they throw voltage through a circuit, and when it comes back, it actually powers a little internal speaker, so you hear a little beep. But it'll give you a delayed and grainy sound, which can sometimes give you either a false positive or no positive at all, when in fact you did have continuity. So you're going to be chasing your tail trying to figure out what the problem is with a circuit when in fact you had continuity the whole time. Get yourself a good, reliable, fluke, true RMS multimeter and your life will be so much better. Number two, a good micro flashlight. I could not stress this one enough. A micro flashlight is going to save your bacon so many times in my specialty operating rooms, you're often going to walk into a dimly lit, crowded environment and a flashlight like this is going to save you. Now this little flashlight right here clips onto my work bag and it goes everywhere. This one right here fits in a holster case that's on my hip and this one here will go with me everywhere as well. 
sometimes you need two flashlights, especially when you're working with two people to solve a problem. Technically, I carry two flashlights with me everywhere. Check your batteries. Make sure that they're not leaking. I function check my flashlights every single day as soon as I get to work just to be sure that I'm good to go for my day. Get yourself a miniature flashlight. When you need it, you really need it. And the number one tool that I think every single biomed should have is a good multi-tool. Now in this pack kit right here, I normally have my miniature flashlight, a Leatherman Wave. This is the tool to get guys, and I'll show you why. You can use bit kits and a bit extender. Now you might be thinking, why am I going to use this? Technicians use this every single day. And in our career field, response time is everything. If I need to run, physically run to a call, this is going to be on my hip already ready to go. And in the bit kit, I have size 0 to size 3 Phillips. I've got a variety of flatheads. I've got square drives. I've got metric and standard hex. I cannot stress that enough. Metric and standard hex. You're going to use metric so much in the medical career field because a lot of our equipment comes from Europe. It's got spare Phillips bit sets. I have a variety of Torx bit sets. Torx is another one that you're going to use all the time. It's going to be everywhere in medical equipment and having it is going to be so handy. And I also have the bit extender. Now the bit extender, you just pop a bit out, you slide it in there, and you're good to go. The Leatherman Wave, it's got this little tool right here, and I normally keep the flat blade and what is that, a number one, number one Phillips, and a flat blade. I keep in my tool all the time, but when you need that extra bit, there you go. This particular tool has been with me for over a decade. This one has been with me on deployments in the military. It's been through multiple hospitals. I even know of one instance when a biomed used his Leatherman to save a patient's life because he had a surgical table where the board had shorted out and it was moving uncontrollably. So he got down there beneath, kicked out the side panel, and then he cut the hydraulic lines with his Leatherman. The next most useful feature on a Leatherman is obviously going to be the knives. We use knives all the time. You're going to use it from opening boxes, cutting zip ties. I'll tell you what, having a knife on you all the time is going to make your life so much easier because there are things that we're going to have to do and we're going to have to do it in a hurry. We use knives for even things like cutting hoses or stripping wires. You see here, the pliers have a little wire stripper jaw. I've used that so many times. It all fits into a, a nice little holster kit. This is a holster kit that I think I got at Home Depot. All the bits slide right in there, nice and neat. I latch it, and my flashlight fits in the side. Fits right on my hip, and I'm ready to go. This goes on my hip every single day when I get to work. That's number one get yourself a Leatherman multi-tool. Now I know I said that this is a 10-tool roundup, but here's two honorable mentions that you guys should know about. This here is a Fluke Volt Alert, and what it does is when you turn it on and you get it near an AC power source, it'll glow red. And the cool thing about this is you can use it for diagnosing stuff or for your own safety. Rule number one of Biomed is never ever trust somebody else's troubleshooting. So if you've got one of these guys, you don't have to whip out your multimeter to see if every single electrical outlet or circuit that you're working on has been de-energized. You can just whip this guy out, quickly move it around, figure out if you have power in the system or where the power stops in the system. So instead of using a multimeter and checking points and points and points, if you're working with AC power, you can quickly go through a system and figure out where the power stopped and then start troubleshooting that component. The Fluke Volt Alert. I have this thing in my tool bag. It's the most useful portable device. And one of the most useful tools you might not even realize is going to be your phone. 
I know you probably have it on your hip every single day anyway, but your phone is going to save you so much hassle. I photo document everything. If it's physical damage, I photo document if there's a broken part that I need to order from another country, I can easily take a photo and I will email it out before I even leave the operating room. So I get work done at an incredible pace. I don't have to go all the way back to my desk, research a part and see what's going on. I can read my Google Drive which has got a variety of service manuals. I can look up forums to see if anybody else has seen the error that I'm currently witnessing. Your phone is one of the most versatile, mandatory tools in your kit. Use your phone more, document things, and it's going to save you so much hassle. But this is one of the most essential tools in my toolkit. Thanks for watching guys. I hope you like this 10 tools video. I'm going to have plenty of other videos with specialty tools, but these are the 10 tools that I carry with me almost every single day for every service call. And I just figured that you guys should be aware. Maybe you haven't seen some of these tools before, but now you know what they're used for. Perhaps it'll make your life easier. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoy it. Give me a big old fat thumbs up and stay tuned. I've got lots of videos in the works.